Euclid's. Welcome to this video on Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. Euclid's Definition In this video, we will discuss about Euclid's definitions. Let's begin with some historical background related to the origin of geometry. Geometry The word geometry originated from the two Greek words, geo and mitrin. Geo means earth or land and mitrin means to measure. From this, it seems that the word geometry originated due to the need to measure land. Friends, do you think that this branch of mathematics, that is geometry, has originated recently? No, it has been studied in various forms by every civilization since ancient times. For the Egyptians, every time the Nile River would get flooded, it would destroy the boundaries of their fields. They faced many difficulties to rebuild those boundaries the same way. Egyptians developed many geometrical techniques and rules to solve these problems. Looking at the canals and pyramids, we can easily say that they used their knowledge in their construction also. And in the Indian subcontinent as well, by seeing the design and arrangement of cities such as Harappa and Mohenjo-daro found during excavation, one can realize that the people of Indus Valley civilization also had an abundant knowledge of geometry, not just by seeing, but also by reading the Vedas and scriptures, we have found evidence of knowledge of geometry. In the Sri Yantra, given in the Atharva Veda, the nine isosceles triangles connected with each other are hidden. Can you tell the total number of triangles in this figure made of triangles? These are arranged in such a way that 43 small triangles can be formed from them. We have been receiving information on geometry from one generation to the next, either orally or through written messages on copper plates. In some civilizations, such as Babylonia, India and Rome, geometry was confined only to a subject with practical perspectives. But people of civilizations, such as Greece, showed a great interest in the arguments behind geometry. The Greek mathematician Thales first provided the fact that the diameter of a circle bisects that circle into two equal parts. Friends, you would have heard the name of Greek mathematician Pythagoras. He was Thales' disciple. Pythagoras and his comrades together discovered many geometrical properties and developed the principles of geometry. All the Greek mathematicians of that time considered geometry as the abstract model of the world in which they lived. And by looking at things around them, they developed the concepts of point, line and plane, that is surface. They also developed some concepts from the study of solid objects. For example, solid objects have shape, measurement and position and they can be transported from one place to another. They have three dimensions, that is, they are three-dimensional. Friends, its boundaries are called plane or surface. A surface has two dimensions and it has no thickness. And the boundaries of a surface are either curved or straight lines. And it has one dimension. That is, it is one-dimensional. The ends of these lines are points and they have no dimension. Euclid, a teacher of mathematics at Alexandria in Egypt, arranged all these statements briefly as definitions in his book. Elements in which he collected all the knowledge of mathematics known up to that time. He divided that book into 13 chapters and named each one a booklet. Friends, let's look at those definitions. First definition, a point is one which has no area. Here, they have not defined area. Second definition is, a line is a breathless length. That is, a line has no breadth, but here, length and breadth are also not defined. 
The third definition is both the ends of a line are points. Point is where the line ends. This is the fourth definition. Line which lies evenly with the points on itself. That is, we can say that on joining many points, a line is formed. The fifth definition is that a surface is that which has only length and breadth. That is, we can say that a surface has no thickness. The sixth definition says that the edges of a surface are lines, sides, that is boundaries. And the seventh definition says that a plane surface is a surface which lies evenly with the straight lines on itself. That is, we can say that there are many lines on a surface. Friends, there is a need to define several terms in the definitions given by Euclid such as area in the first definition, length and breadth in the second and fifth definitions. If in the first definition we define an area by the space it occupies, then we will need to define space as well. Similarly, we get a long series of definitions without any end. For this reason, mathematicians considered some terms in geometry as undefined. Friends, that's all in this session. Today we discussed Euclid's definitions. See you in the next video. Thank you.